everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name's Acacia. Today I'm going to be doing my Booktubeathon wrap up. So let's dive in. I'm going to go from least to most enjoyed. Shall we? Yes. So the first one and the one I enjoyed the least was Guy Dazelle's Ping Young. I. It's a journey through North Korea. This I read for the challenge of to read a book by some about someone who is very different from you. Um, first of all, I did not enjoy the artwork. It was just not my style. I think they could have done a better job. Um, the way that they drew the people from North Korea was a little racist. And that was a big problem for me. And then there were a couple of comments that were very much judgmental of the culture and not in an objective way where you're kind of like discussing a culture and their differences from your own, but more like judging the culture for having these differences. And I didn't like that. And I didn't like how... Basically, I learned a lot, um, but I felt really much more like it was a judgmental nonfiction around North Korea than I felt it was actually a relevant piece about North Korea. I want to learn more about North Korea, but I don't think this is the place to go. It was, it was not, it was, it just wasn't good. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. Then we have The Beguiled by Thomas Cullen, and I enjoyed this book. But the reason I am, I gave Pyongyang three stars. I think I'm going to bump it down to two. This one I gave three stars. I would recommend it if you like a gothic horror. But my complaint about it was all of the different perspectives sounded the same. So all of the points of view sounded as if they were coming from the same person and there was no differentiation and that really bothered me and it didn't ruin the story because I was able to just read it as if it was one narrative and it was fine um, and it was still a good book and it was dark and it was creepy and it was crazy. Really gothic, really messed up, really creepy, but all of the narratives sounded identical and that just kind of lessened the enjoyment for me immensely. And so if I hadn't had that issue, this would have been only a four star, but because I had that issue, it became a three star. Then 3.5 Neon Green, which is by Margaret Wappler. This I really enjoyed. I... I'm not really big into sci-fi. I want to find more sci-fi that I like, but it's really hard for me to find sci-fi that I like, so this was a good place to start. So this is the premise of a lottery where you can win the opportunity to have a spaceship in the back of your yard. And this boy enters and he wins. And this spaceship is now in the back of his yard. But his father is a activist about environmental safety. And so he gets super up in arms about this experience and he's really mad about it. It was a really interesting book about family dynamic and what happens when a family disagrees and what happens when... I don't know how to explain this book without giving away a lot of it. The themes are very clear. They're very much about family and the environment and life from another pl place and what what it would be like to watch us and what our experience would be um, and how we behave as a family and how we behave as humans. I really enjoyed it, but I still only gave it 3.5 stars. It just didn't go all the way for me. I definitely recommend it as a read to get into sci-fi if you're curious about sci-fi. And if you like sci-fi, you would also enjoy this. 
Then another 3.5. This is Elijah's Mermaid, which is by Essie Fox. This was my read for the cover. Oh. Hold on. This one was to read a book completely outside. So I read this at the Bluegrass Festival and I read it completely outside. This one was to read a seventh book. This one was to read a book because it was a book that you bought because of the cover. So, this was solid. It had beautiful prose. It was really well done, really well executed. Although, eh, maybe not well executed. It was, it left me wanting. Like, there was a lot of moments where I felt they could have been more stretched out and fleshed out. Um, and I felt as if a couple of scenes really left me wanting for more and left me feeling really kind of lost and unhappy with the ending. And not the ending of the book, but unhappy with the ending of the scene. And I, I wanted more, I wanted more gothic. I wanted more horror. I wanted more hysteria. I wanted more, I wanted more. That's really what the, the end result of this whole book was. I wanted more. The premise is it follows two, di two different main girls. One is Pearl, who is saved by a brothel and becomes part of the household um and then she has webbed fingers I believe is what it was and she is different from other people and she will be sold to the highest bidder and then the other one are orphan twins Lily and Elijah and they are adopted by their grandfather and they are <sighs> their life overlaps with Pearl's in some way. And the lead up to it is great. The premise is really good. Um, I really liked it. I just wanted more. That's really what it comes down to. I just wanted more. Then Four Stars was Dysphoria by Shane Nelson. I sobbed sobbed during this collection. I was blown away. It discusses mental illness. It discusses medical environments. It discusses pain and being sick and, and, and the, your mind and how that works. It discusses, oh, it just, it, touches on so many things that I that I find so important and it's <sighs> so good but so dark so dark I I just felt freaked out and scared and overwhelmed and sad and stressed but like it it just it it was it was brilliant and I really enjoyed it. I just, there was, there was something in it that just didn't go all the way. Does that make sense? Like it didn't get all the way to a five star read. That just, it wasn't that oomph that I needed, but oh my God, it was so good. So good. So creepy. So dark. Just so dark. And just, oh, it's all the things. All the things that just tick my boxes. I just really enjoyed it. 4.5 stars was the story of How How Saints Die by Cameron Marcus. The story of Ellie, who is a little girl who is coming to terms with the fact that her mother is in a psych ward and trying to live in a world where she's been taught and raised on fairy tales and mythology and the rest of her town and classmates have not heard this mythology that she knows and that she understands to be true and so she's considered weird and strange 
it was just really really breathtaking I really enjoyed it and the thing I really loved about it was reading this by the ocean um so this one I ended up doing so the last one was read a book with the parts on the cover and then you know I can't remember what this one does but it did something um read a read a book in a day there it is um I read like three of these in a day so they kind of all count I just really enjoyed this I thought it was really beautiful and wonderful I'll be doing a full in-depth review of it because it was sent to me for review so look out for that and then my five star book my new favorite book of all time I don't know if it's surpassed Jane Eyre but it's pretty darn close The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath this was my hyped book this was incredible this was exactly what I needed it to be it was honest it was raw it was strong it was bold it was exquisite it was wonderful it was dark it was strange it was crazy it was it was scary it was real it was just wonderful and I absolutely adore it I highly recommend it if you haven't read the bell jar yet it's so hyped that I don't know who hasn't but if you haven't please 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 pick this up it's fantastic so yes that was my book to wrap up and I will see you guys in my next video bye